All right, boom, boom, babies. Episode 14 of the Drewcast, which I want to thank you and Ricky, by the way. You and Ricky love the Drewcast. He always ta- he's always telling me, bro, you got to do another Drewcast episode. You know, he always brings, you know what I mean? Like, it's that fucking solo. It's like when you're watching Gordon Ramsay cook. You know what I mean? I don't want to watch the other people cook. I'm trying to watch Gordon Ramsay cook. But anyways, yeah. Uh, if you're new to the channel, guys, please subscribe. Give this video a like. Turn your notifications on because I know there's certain people who have the notifications on. They've told me. And uh, thank you. Yeah, Sterling, by the way. It's actually Sterling. It's not people. I'm, I made it sound like I have like a whole group of fans. Just I'm like, I have like hella people who follow me. Like, nah, dude, it's only one person. So can you guys get like him? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so last week I did. I don't want to say falsely, but me and Justin are just learning this new pr- uh, program. Not a program. It's a website called Podbean. Okay. Uh, it distributes this podcast to all listening platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, etc. So last week was we were supposed to put "Say What's Real" episode thirty six on Podbean, but they they told Justin that they were going to send me a confirmation email within what two, one to two weeks. No, it's on Podbean already. Yeah, it's 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 just not on Apple yet. But it's not on Spotify either, though. Is it? I don't know. No, no, because they didn't send me a confirmation email. Regardless, I want to say sorry, guys. This show will be on Spotify and Apple Music soon. I didn't know it was going to take that long to send me a goddamn confirmation email. But for you guys who don't always have YouTube available, or I know some people like our cousin James, he travels a lot. So he's always in his car or his truck. And he, he said, oh, I'd, I'd listen to it on Spotify. I was on Spotify. So I said, okay. You know what I mean? We'll just do this for you, James. Because I know no one else is going to listen to us on Spotify. You know what I mean? Dude? But... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so to get into tonight's show, if you guys are into cyberpunk, you might want to listen up, because they're, Sony's taking it off the, the PlayStation Store, and I'm assuming, Dustin, it's because of the bugs and shit, so I'm kind of new, well, I'm not new, I'm just fucking lazy and fat, but, uh, I'm kind of not into gaming as much as you are. And, and, you know, Emily and all them, they love fucking cyberpunk. Okay, before we get into the cyberpunk thing, guys, the podcast will be on Spotify. I'm not sure about Apple Music, Apple Podcast. <laughs> but yeah, we will check it out. See, Justin just played it. Good job, Justin. But yeah, back to cyberpunk. So, Emily was super pumped about the game. Actually, hella people were super pumped about the game. Am I wrong in saying this, Justin, that this game might be the most over overhyped game of all time, dude? I can't think of another game that was this hyped. Come on, bro. Like, I know people who personally took, like, days off from work. I even had coworkers who had their husbands take days off of work. So, I mean, like, and I'm not saying that that's never happened, but I've personally never seen a game, like, have people take multiple days off just to play it. And the game got pushed back, like, what, twice? No, the... you got pushed back twice, right? No, this game was supposed to come out like seven years ago. It's oh. been a th- reoccurring thing the last like. I t- I told you guys I'm not really into this fucking this gaming thing, but so PlayStation is taking it off the PlayStation Store. I'm not sure if Microsoft is going to follow up with that, you know, for the Xbox people. I think what's going on is that not everybody has the PS5 yet, and what you said earlier, Justin, with the older gen consoles, like this game is so good. That the older gen consoles aren't, they're not like keeping up with the graphics, I'm assuming. So, what is that? So, they're gonna get a picture, that's pretty bad. Huh? I said, we'll post a picture, it's pretty bad. So, they're gonna, they're gonna give people refunds. And I'm assuming that what they're gonna just re release the game. I don't get it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't get what's going on with this game because she, she's playing it right now. And at first, I would tell you guys, like, oh, you know, she says the game's fine for the PS4, nothing's going on, but she's even telling me right now, like, as the game goes further, it bugs out a lot. But, like, recently, just recently, like, maybe, like, a half hour, 40 minutes ago, she was trying to change a radio station on Cyberpunk. And literally, as she's trying to hit the button to change the station, everything is going... And, like, it went back up to the thing. I said, Emily, did you do that on purpose? She goes, no, it's just been doing that. I was like, oh, so it's starting to fuck up for you. It'll be very interesting because this reminds me of No Man's Sky. You remember No Man's Sky? Mm-hmm. It came out, got hella bad reception. That, But as the game went along, they fixed it. Also, Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 had the same problem. 
when it first came out, hella people shitted on it. But it ended up redeeming itself. I think this game's gonna go along with those games. I don't even know, man. Sky was just nominated for an award, too. Yeah, like it was. Here. It was nominated for an award. Which I'm very proud of that game. I was gonna get that game, but the bad reviews in the beginning, along with Battlefront, made me not want to get it. So, yeah. Uh, so earlier this week, I went uh, to a cabin, which is the first time I, I sound super fucking white right now. You know, I mean, it's like I just got back from a cabin, but you know, what I mean, so yeah, I got back. It was amazing, guys. And if I'm not mistaken, bro, people should just start doing that. Because there's a lot of times in the past where I would like go to work and not call out or I would like fucking not take vacation days because I'm so, you know, this, and I'm like, oh, work, work might fucking get mad at me. It's like, bro, we get one life. Like, who gives a fuck what work thinks, dog? Because if I die, they're replacing me tomorrow. They might take my corpse out of the ground and say, oh, are you still working? I'm not working today. I'm dead. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, so, bro, I'm not, <clears throat> I respect my job, right? I, that's how I make a paycheck, bro. That's how I, you know, I, that's how I keep a roof on my head. I feed all my animals and shit, you know what I mean? But it's like, bro, I'm just telling you guys, take the time, bro. Work, work and suck it. Okay? I don't care if you work at Boeing. I don't care if you're Justin right now behind the soundboard. You know, sometimes Justin might, he might fucking, what is it called? The food poisoning. He might fucking eat a bad oyster one time. And I'm like, Justin, we got to say what's real episode to do. He's like, hey, I'm shitting my pants. Well, can you come over and shit your pants here? Or what, dude? That's what I'm saying. Listen, sometimes you might have to tell me, hey, Drew, fuck off this week. I'm shitting myself. I'm like legit shitting myself. Which, funny, funny, by the way. So, obviously, next week is Christmas, guys. I did. I, I, I fuck. I mean, I don't mind shooting, but like I got family and shit, guys. So, this is going to probably be the last episode of the year. If we had that fucking, you know, the every week we did it as in, I'd feel hella bad, right? But we we lost the streak, dog. We lost it. And I'm not about to pretend like, you know, maybe there's some good shooters. They go 9 for 10, dog. You know what I mean? Like, no one's fucking out here shooting 13 for 13 threes. Like, we're not Steph Curry in it out here, dude. You know what I mean? We're not LaMelo Ball, which he did hella good, by the way. But off the point, guys. Dude, literally, work can suck it, dude. You know what I mean? We're like, bro, I'm telling you, I had so much fun at this cabin, right? I, like I said, I feel hella weird because like most people don't get to do this, but I, 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 I harvested my own, my own oysters. Oh yeah. I was drunk doing it too. I felt like Christopher Columbus, dude. I'm not going to lie. Dude. When I was getting the oysters, I was like, yoink, yoink, you're mine. Yoink. I don't care which yoink, yoink. I was just yoinking them. Listen. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Right at the fucking rocks. You know, just yoink, yoink, yoink. And I felt like, bro, I wanted to make the WPOB flag right on the beach. Private property, suck my dick. Boom, right in the beach. It's a WPOB flag waving. And it's like, bro, so someone just conquered all the oysters and he's not a fucking sea lion. I mean, he looks like a sea lion because of his hair and beard. But you know what I mean? But yeah, so we're at boating as well. And speaking of sea lions, I, I, I don't know. Because when you say sea lion, they sound cute. Right, you go to the circus and it's like, oh, you know the sea lions, Justin, that the guy at the circus is like making them jump through rings. These aren't the sea lions that I'm talking about. I'm talking about street sea lions. Okay, I'm not talking about house sea lions that sit inside and they complain about the. I'm talking about real sea lions, bro. So when I I take the boat off the uh, rope, right, and I put it into the water, and I hear like, I hear like something out in the middle of the in the waves. And there's like these three big ass sea lions just sitting there. And I'm like, fuck, dude, you know, we take the boat out there. I get like probably 60 feet in front of the dock. And I feel them under the boat like they're butting their head or something. They're butting something. So I hit in the boat and like I'm thinking like, fuck, maybe these sea lions just want to say like, hey, maybe the sea lions just are like, hey, what the fuck is this? Right. I don't know, dude. Uh, maybe they're mad because the night before I took the oysters. So then we go back to the shore. Everything was good. By the way, there was a fucking hot tub there, a sauna. This Airbnb had a sauna. It's like, bro, some people would consider that their house. These people had an Airbnb. And that was just like probably like, oh, that's just like our summer home. You know what I mean? We don't even fucking live there. It's like, bro, imagine having that type of money. 
to just be like, hey, that's my summer home. My actual home, I have Disneyland in the backyard. You know, can you? <laughs> hey, uh, I, I, have a, I have Boeing. Boeing's actually in my backyard. So if you wake up because of the jet engines, just don't fucking mind, dude. Don't fucking mind. Why'd I say it like that? Mind? Don't mind. Yeah, it's like, hey, oh, back at home, actually, fuck it. We have like Lucasfilm. Yeah, Luke, where they shoot all the Star Wars movies? Yeah, it's in my backyard. Yeah, that, can you imagine that being that rich? That's what it felt like being there. It's like, oh, <clears throat> you can harvest your own oysters and you don't have to have a fishing license, mind you. Because I know a lot of people are going to say, but do you have a fishing? Do you have a fishing license? No, it's private property. So we don't have to have a fucking fishing license, dude. Some people are going to be like, well, did you, did you get a shellfish? Fucking remember every... Bro, Justin, remember how many people used to come into work and ask for the shellfish license? Well, I don't have to have one because one private property on someone's Airbnb and at their real house, they have Disneyland in their backyard. So I don't have to have a shellfish <laughs> And the only thing I was scared of, by the way, with the oysters is like I felt like I could have got sick, but it was probably the alcohol. So either way, we're good. <clears throat> and to end that, and to end the night off, uh, we played this game called the Donner Dinner Party. It's basically a board game version of Among Us. What adults would play? Let's be real. Like if you're an adult who actually has a career, this is what you're playing. You know, if I can play Among Us, like I tried to, and Among Us is cool. I'm not shitting on Among Us, but like if you're an actual adult and like you want to have real friends who aren't fucking alcoholics and what well, we were drinking. So sorry. <laughs> if you want to have real friends who have fucking like careers and shit and don't work, you know what I mean? Then you'll play the Donner dinner party, but we played it. It's amazing. And it causes hella drama, dude. And there's like a point, like before you vote someone out of the group, it's like, oh, Hey, bro, you kind of look fucking hella mad sus over there. Bro, this guy looks mad at, and we're using Among Us terms, but I don't care. It's like, hey, this guy over here, you look like a cannibal, dude. You're a little fucking too fat to be sitting here accusing people. Looks like somebody's been eating some flank while we weren't looking, dude. So it's a fun game. You guys should get it. And it's called the Donner Dinner Party, by the way. And you're welcome, because when you get it, it's fucking amazing. So when I was out there, though... <clears throat> Like the town out there, I think it's like Brennan or Brennan. It's like a small fucking like, you know, sea town, like oyster bars and fucking like, you know, like the women out there, like the average age is probably like 45 to 60. There's no young girls out there. I, I guarantee you there's no young girls, dude. You don't you're, you're not young out there. You're just born as 45 years old when you're rich. That's kind of what that town seemed like. So you go there. <clears throat> and the reason I like towns like that, bro, is because people, like, they're just up front. You know what I mean? They're up front, right? They're like, hey, I don't know about technology because I'm old. And it's respectable, dude. It's respectable. From a town like Federal Way, okay, I, I'm, I'm going from an oyster town where people can just tell you straight up, I'm old. I don't know how to use technology. Now I'm, you go to Federal Way, right? Right? I'm acting like Josh is here, like, right, Josh, right? <laughs> right? You want to say, yeah, he's not here. Anyways, he's not here. You go to a small town. They're like, hey, I'm old. Just forgive me. It's like, oh, okay, I have sympathy. I have empathy? Because my grandparents probably don't know about technology, so I'll help you out. You go to Federal Way, and what's so annoying, bro, is everybody seems to be, I'm not from here. Everybody seems to say... Like, oh, I'm not from around here. It's like, bro, is everybody not from around here? Everybody says that, bro. I've lived in Foot Away for 20 years. Where's the Best Buy at? Bro, then you haven't lived here for 20 years. Or technology has just made people lazy. You, you could probably agree with me on that, son. Technology has made people lazy. You know what's fucking outstanding? Like, it's so... I don't even know how to explain this, but when customers call the store and they're like, oh, can you call... I'm on the phone with this guy, right? So I'm already on the phone. This is my cell phone. And I'm like, he's like, oh, can you call the other store for me? While I'm on the phone? You want me to call this other store while I'm on the phone? So while I'm on the phone with you, you want me to call the other store? No, bro, pick up your phone. Pick up your phone, bro. Or, hey, where's where's the, the Bangkok at? How about... And I always get mad at people. I'm like, how about... Pull out your fucking phone and you Google it, dude. 
Google where the Bangkok's at. Because I'm not telling you where the Bangkok's at. You know what I mean, bro, Justin? You, you do that to me a lot, bro. Hmm. Like, I'll ask you instead of asking Google. Just be real. You should be like, Andrew, bro, Google it, dog. I've told you that before. I know you do. That's what I'm saying. You tell me that all the time. I'm the people that I'm talking about right now. I'll message you at late at night about something, but I easily could probably just Google it, but I trust you more. I trust you more than Google, dog. You know, that's how our relationship is on a first name basis type shit. I trust Justin more than Google. I'm not asking Google, bro. I really do treat you like that. I'm like, hey, Justin, what about this? She's like, yeah, you easily could just be like, bro, are you kidding? It's like four in the morning right now, dude. I got kids. Can you fucking not text me and Google it or what, dude? But it's like, bro, everybody does that. It's like, hey, I'm not from around here. Is everybody not from around here? It's like, dude. Everybody says the same shit. I don't know. I'm not from around here. I don't know how to Google, but I have an iPhone 12. Did you just get the iPhone to look cool? Is that what you did? You just got the iPhone to look cool. That's what you did. You just got that because your wife probably wanted you to get it. Which, by the way, I'm proud of my, my mother-in-law, by the way. Shout out to you, Shannon. Her husband, he doesn't have an iPhone. Yeah, he doesn't have an iPhone. And she's trying to force him to get one. He doesn't have an iPhone. He's one of those people, dude. I'm just going to rough it out with my Samsung S Plus. You know the people who still have like, the Samsung 5 and shit? Kudos to you, dude. Because you didn't sell out. You did not fucking sell out, bro. I, I sold out, dude. I was one of those people. I remember for the longest time, I didn't have an iPhone. What the fuck was that? <laughs> someone's, fucking, someone's fucking out here boofing, dude. Boofing off the coke, dude. But, <laughs> but anyways, no. I was, I was one of those people. I never had an iPhone. And I always was against it. I was like, fuck no, bro. I ain't getting no iPhone, dude. I'm not getting no fucking iPhone, bro. But then I went and I sold out, dude. It's just sometimes you got to sell out, dude. But don't be one of those people that's like, hey, I'm not from around here. Bro, I'll make you from around here. You know what I mean? I'll make you from around here. But yeah, <laughs> on to another. So this isn't a serious topic. It's not a serious topic. But Justin, bro, if you were Conor McGregor, okay? If you were McGregor and you saw Jake Paul's video that he just made about you, are you taking the 50 million, dude? Are you taking the 50 million to whoop this little fucking kid's ass? Because before, look, okay, before he, Jake Paul makes this video, <clears throat> it's like, hey, I'm not fighting you, Jake Paul. Sorry, I'm not fighting you. You knocked out Nate Robinson, but I'm not Nate Robinson, bro. If I'm McGregor, I'm like, I'm not Nate Robinson. I'm Conor McGregor, and I'm going to fucking destroy you. But then Jake Paul makes the video calling his wife ugly. I got f uh, my team. My team sent you 50 million. 50 million? Bro, and then also Jake Paul. Same video. Same video. He calls out Dana White too. Bro, I'm putting the pride down, man. I'm putting my pride aside. Let's fight this fucking YouTuber. Right, well, let's do it. 50 million. Bro, I'll beat the fuck out of my mom, bro, for 50 million. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll beat the fuck out of my brothers, bro. My my little nephews, I have two of them. Oh, three nephews. All three of them. I'll pack them the fuck out for 50 million dollars. So you're telling me right now you won't take bro. Somebody was explaining it to me this when I was at the cabin. You know, I'd be like, that's just when I was at the cabin, someone explained to me. Like, it was, oh, oh, oh. But yeah, while we were harvesting our own oysters, by the way. But yeah, he was telling me that like in the contract, when UFC does the contracts, you know, obviously Dana White doesn't want his talent fighting somewhere else. So maybe in the contract, McGregor can't fight. Away from UFC, bro. Unless Dana White agrees to it. But has, has Connor got a bag that big? Maybe he has, but that's $50 million is a lot of fucking money, dude. It's a lot of money. I mean, we're in a fucking pandemic right now, bro. People can't even... They're trying to talk about giving us $600 for our next stimulus, Justin. And this guy has $50 million to hand out? Yeah, I'm taking the $50 million and I'm wiping my balls on you. It says right here that he got roughly eighty five for the Mayweather fight. Connor did. Okay, so he's got a big bag before. But, I mean, like, but bro, $50 million to fight Jake Paul? Like, bro, I'm cutting off both my arms, and I'm just going to headbutt Jake Paul the whole time. And not to say Jake Paul's a slouch. We saw what you did to Nate Robinson. 
granite he was about you know what i mean like granite right you know what i mean like i would have fucking i would knock out fucking Nate robinson let's be real but you know what i mean but like i'd fucking two-piece him for sure but I, like i'm just saying like if someone called you out like that son, you t- you're not turning on the 50 million bro i know you're done it's a lot of fucking ps5s you can buy you know what i mean so to do connor do it for ireland see i got the little fucking the little leprechaun right here He's probably not a leprechaun. He probably doesn't like being called that. I don't know. What is your name, dude? Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, the Connor dude, do it for Ireland, all right? Do it for Ireland. And for the people who are listening right now, because there's going to be people listening on Spotify and Apple Music, I have a leprechaun on my mic stand. So if you want to see the leprechaun, you are going to have to go to YouTube. Yeah, so click on the YouTube app. This next one's insane. So... So I don't know, like, the. so I do know the, so Lil Wayne got caught with guns again, right, son? So they're, you know. So it was reported last week that he sold his masters to Universal for $100 million. And everybody's like, what? You're worth more than $100 million, right? Like, we're all like, hey, you, Lil Wayne, are worth more than $100 million. Why are you selling your masters? Some people are like, hey, he's probably, he probably needs money because he knows he's going to prison, like, for a long time, right? $100 million is generational wealth. So maybe that's what he needs. <clears throat> then I wake up this morning and it's reported that Nikki and Drake's masters are included in that. That's a steal. But what's going on, bro? And Drake's okay with that? Probably not. J- for a hundred Drake Drake's masters alone are probably worth up almost a billion, bro. Am There's I wrong? No way Drake signed off on that shit. Nikki too. Dude, Nikki's masters alone are probably up towards a billion. You're telling me Lil Wayne sold his and their, like, obviously not all of Drake's masters, right? Because there's stuff that Drake probably owns outside of the, the young money deals, right? But it's like, bro, what? Lil Wayne, what are you doing, bro? Like, I get it. If you're about to go to prison, you need the money, dog. I absolutely get it. But for a hundred million dollars, bro. Do you think, Justin, do you think Lil Wayne signed off? Who told him to do that, dude? You know what I mean? It's like, it's weird to me. What's weird to me is Lil Wayne could barely get his own music out. That's what derailed his career this last half decade. Like, he literally couldn't release Birdman and them. So you're telling me he can't do that, but he can sell his and Nicki and Drake's masters to somebody. It seems super fishy, bro. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too far into it. It does. It's like, What? I don't know how many songs it was between all three of them, but you got to imagine they're like a those lot. three together. That has to be like a billion dollars worth of. It just seems like he's like, here, hundred million. Just give it to me. Worth like, of asset, whatever the word is. Because now Universal can take that and probably make that within a what? I don't even know that. I'm not going to act like I'm a mathematician here. They're probably going to recoup that easy. Fuck, man. All right, I wanted to get to Tom Cruise yelling at his staff during, you know, when they were shooting the movie. Did you hear about that? Mm-hmm. Now, not that not that it's not right, whatever, because, you know, people, you know, the politically correct people doesn't like, we're, we're in a pandemic and you're supposed to follow protocol. And it's like, bro, listen here and listen to me good. There's people packing Walmarts and Target right now. There's people packing the mall. There's people that if you can eat outside... In an inside tent, then you can eat, right? These people are still getting together and shooting a movie for your entertainment. So I get it that if they broke the COVID protocol, and because I guess the movie did get derailed because someone broke the, the COVID protocol. So I get why Tom Cruise would be mad, but it's weird coming from Tom Cruise. It's just weird. because You know, like the Scientology shit that you hear about? It's so weird hearing him bark at these people like they're Scientologists. Hey, Tom Cruise, you can talk to your fucking weirdo people like that because that's the kind of power they give you. But outside of Scientology, I'm packing you the fuck out, bro. You know what I mean? You talk to me like that? I'm not a Scientologist, my guy. I'll fucking knock you out. Yeah, but then he's probably just going to sue you. Oh, yeah. Okay, what, sue me with by God or something? I know Scientologists don't... They believe in the Xeno and all that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get into it. I'm probably going to get a cease and desist letter from this. They do. They send that out. And I don't, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, you know, 
if anybody's watching, it's like, hey, I'm on, 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 I'm on a side, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, uh, I don't pick and choose. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, bro, you can talk to your people like that. You're not talking to me like that. So if I pull my mask down to eat some spaghetti, or God forbid, I pull my mask down because you know I, I can't breathe. What if somebody pull, like, you know, and he's like, put your fucking mask, you know, like, bro, Tom Cruise. You shut the fuck up, bro. I've had enough, dude. I heard that he was yelling at them just because they were standing too close together, watching the same camera. It wasn't even like anything like super crazy. Serious. That's even worse, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's the Scientology stuff that's making me weirded out by this because it's like, hey, you could talk to your people like that because that's what that's how you guys run whatever organization you run, right? It's almost like when we're at work. You know, people talk to you a certain type of way at work. It's like, bro, outside these walls, I'll fucking lay you down, dude, like some cement. So we're not about to go there. Like, I, I'm not promoting violence here. This type of, on our podcast, we don't. Even for the people at home who are just, you know, listening to the audio, like, you can hear it in my voice. I don't, we don't promote violence. But for Tom Cruise, I do. Bro, shut the fuck up, Tom Cruise. And I mean, oh, the, and then people are like, but they. But they violated the COVID policy. It's like, hey, dude, and your mom didn't wear a condom. Oh, sorry, your dad. You know, well, your mom, too. Hey, this being all condoms. But your dad didn't wear a condom, and he violated the policies, too. So maybe this whole thing that we're in is just violating a huge policy. All right? I know some Tom Cruise fans are going to be hella mad at me. And it's like, bro, for the listeners, it, I'm putting up a middle finger. So that's what we're doing. I don't give a shit, dude. Scientology's probably gonna shut this YouTube channel down, dude. I'm done, guys. I'm fucking fried, bro. I'm fucking fried up in this bitch. I'm like a pork belly, dude. Give me a side of rice and serve me to the country, dude. Serve me to your fucking your fucking your loyal followers, bro. Hey, uh, Leah Remini, if you're listening, uh, I might need a job after this. <laughs> All right, you're, okay. We're gonna end tonight off with some Star Wars news. So, bro, big Star Wars news. Huge Star Wars news, okay? Actually, I, so before we start, before we end, like I told you guys earlier, you know, this is probably going to be the last video for the new year. But, bro, season two Mandalorian ends? The, it ends tonight, bro. The finale's tonight. I might do a special video. I might. And I'll probably, I'll edit myself. I'll try to edit myself. But we need, you know what I mean? It's the season fucking finale. So, obviously, I can't talk about it tonight because it's not until a couple hours from now. But, dude, Justin Disney just revealed hella shit about Marvel and Star Wars. I could get into all that right now, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to get, I'm going to stick with what I know, the Star Wars stuff. So, you guys, if you're a fan of my show, you guys know I, lo I love Star Wars. I love The Mandalorian. I've been covering it for like the past six, five weeks now. Um, so, a lot of the stuff that they're doing is going to be on Disney+. Plus. There is a movie by Patty Jenkins called R a Rogue Squadron. Which I'm super pumped. It's like, bro, can you imagine a whole movie about the squad, uh, Rogue Squadron and the X-Wings? Dude, it's like fucking Pearl Harbor all over again. Okay? So, the shows that I'm excited for. So, we have Ahsoka. She's getting her own live action show. Obi-Wan Kenobi. We've been knowing that for a while, but they've had a like, you know. And I'm going to get back to the Obi-Wan one. Because I have some crazy news to tell you about that one. They have Lando. The Acolyte. So the Acolyte's going to take place at the end of the High Republic era, which is probably like roughly 200 years before the events of Episode 1. So I'm not sure how they're going to do the Acolyte, but it's it's supposed to be a female-centric show, I guess. Um, I, that's what the early rumors were saying. I'm not sure. Sounds fucking fun to me, dude. The Bad Batch, an animated show. So the Bad Batch is going to take place after the Clone Wars. It's going to be about a group of clone troopers, you know? And how they navigate life with the Order 66 and shit. Rangers of the New Republic, which is a spin-off show of The Mandalorian. Which, if you like, you know, Rangers of the New Republic. But that actually kind of sounds lit, dude. It sounds lit. And if we get more Gina Carano, then I'm in, dude. I'm in. We have Andor, which that's this, this, this one. I'm on in. I'm on in it, dude. You saw Rogue One, right? You know, Cassie and Andor. The one that Sorry, fucking we like once when remember we, at the end when him out. and uh, Jen Erso are on the beach. He's like, "Your father would be proud." And the fucking Death Star. Yeah, so he's getting his own show that happens before that, dude. No one's excited for that. I'm sorry, 
Diego Diego Luna, like if you're watching, bro, like I, I you know, kudos, bro. I don't have my own Star Wars show, so I can't talk shit. But it's like no one's excited, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have Star Wars Visions, which is a one-off episode. No, it's not one-off episode. It's gonna be in the style of one-off episodes, but it's gonna be an anime. So I'm excited about that one because that's like, whoa, an anime? And it's like one-off style episodes. Cool, right? So we got a droid story. Now, I don't know if I'm excited about this one. Can you imagine this, like, a whole fucking show about droids and shit? Like, I'm not, you know I mean? I got, like, CTP, but I'm not trying to fucking watch it, a whole episode about, you know? Can we just be real with ourselves? It's almost like the and Cassie and Andor thing. Like, no, I'm not trying to watch a whole show about droids. Let's just be honest. But maybe if I get, like, a new trash compactor, maybe I'll fucking, you know what I mean? I'll watch that show. But uh, then Mando Season 3, obviously. And then Taika Waititi. Hopefully I said your name right. You know, the guy who does Thor... The new mm -hmm. Thor movie that's coming out. So he's doing a movie. They didn't release the name or anything. They did release an image, which is very a very cool image, by the way. And most people that are watching probably won't. I mean, and I'm not gonna put it up for the people listening on Spotify. Don't worry, you're not missing out because I'm not putting it up. But yeah, that's the those are the shows and two of the movies. That's crazy. That's like Disney knows like. I only subscribe to Disney Plus, Justin, for Mando, right? So, like, you get Mando once a year. You get, you know, and all these shows might be like, hey, you get like three, four, three, four shows once a year. And then you get a movie. It's like, oh, cool. When can we go to the movies again, people? You know, but yeah. So, I'm, so the one that I told you guys I would, I would touch on is the Obi-Wan movie. Not the Obi-Wan show, sorry. So K Kathleen Kennedy, which she's the president of Lucasfilm, right? Essential. She, she comes out and says it'll be a rematch of the century. Because Hayden Christensen's coming back to play Darth Vader. And, you know, you could tell him and Ian McGregor, they're super pumped, bro. So you already know the energy is there. You're like, fuck, these guys are pumped. You know, when like someone's pumped for something like, fuck, this is exciting. They're both hell excited. So she says rematch of the century. Now... Most people would say the last time they fought was on Mustafar, you know, and then they, you know, kind of the dialogue between the characters kind of insinuate that it's like, oh, the I haven't felt a presence like this since, and then Vader walks away or, and then Vader tells Obi-Wan, like, you know, the last time I left you, I was, I was but a learner and now I'm the master, right? So there's a little gray area, but I came up with a theory a year ago and I posted it on Reddit, Okay. Now, I actually, and I'm not trying to be like, the, I'm not trying to be one of those guys. I actually believe I came up with this theory because this wasn't floating around the internet at all. So I actually think I'm the one that I came up with this theory, bro. And I think this is how they're going to fight in the show. So, you know, in episode eight, Justin, when Ray and Kylo, they use the force Skype, they call it force Skype, but basically like they use the force to be in one area to, and they can touch each other and like fucking interact. Bro, what if they put that in episode eight as a way for this to happen? You know, like, let's say Obi-Wan's on Mustafar. Not Mustafar. Obi-Wan's on Tatooine. Let's say he's trying to communicate with Qui-Gon and all of a sudden they do like a force Skype. Vader sees him. He sees Vader. But Vader, you know, at first Kylo couldn't see where Ray was at. He's like, where, where are you? You know, Kylo's like, oh, where the Supreme Leader would like to see you. He's like... Yeah, so what if they do that? Like she said the rematch can happen. The rematch could happen like that, like how they did in episode eight, like kind of like the force skip thing. It's like, hey, I don't know where you're at. You don't know where I'm at, but we could fight. Maybe Vader gets like, oh, there's, you know, I don't know. I think that's how they're going to bring them together. I don't think it's going to be a dream sequence. I don't think they'll literally meet in person, but it would make sense. You can have it to where Obi-Wan never leaves Tatooine. He's still watching Luke, right? Because that was his job, was to watch Luke. And Vader can still be on the hunt for Obi-Wan, but then they could be interacting. What if Vader goes into his back to tank? You know, they take those little, you know, when he's like floating in the water, just in a second, and then like he's like meditating, and then he could probably see. I don't know. Like, there's a lot of potential for the Obi-Wan show. I'm going to post a link to that Reddit post. Bro, I am the one who I think I came up with that. Around the time, there was no other, there was nobody else talking about that, dude. And now you have Star Wars YouTubers who are bigger than me. You have them talking about that theory now, dude. 
It's like, bro, I want to say, and I'm not going to say names because I'm I'm newer to the platform, and I'm I'm trying to make friends here. But you know what I mean? Like, I just want to get credit where credit's due because I think I did invent that. Well, I didn't invent it, but you know what I mean. But yeah, so those are the Star Wars shows, guys. Um, super excited. Hopefully, you are too. In the beginning of this episode, I did mention how we weren't on Spotify and Apple Podcast yet because I didn't get the confirmation email. But apparently, they're on both platforms. So if you guys have Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Say What's Real and the Drewcast that we do on this channel will be on those two platforms. If you do not want to listen to just audio, we're also on YouTube with the visual. Uh, my brother does a great job editing this, so you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, if you guys want to support, man, just like subscribe to the YouTube channel, give it a like, hit notifications. If you guys want, to, if you guys also want to help us, Spotify, Apple Podcast, you know that way when I we do end up getting a website one day, I have just you know I have more stuff to put out. Like it's like, hey, I'm on these platforms. Um, yeah, and then uh, like we said before, unless I do some fucking like last second Mandalorian season two finale episode, which I'm gonna try. This will be the last episode for the for the year. We had a good year, guys. A couple of mishaps. But that's good, though. We could have had more mishaps, Justin. During COVID? Mm -hmm. Think about it. During COVID, me and you were hella consistent, bro. Who else was this consistent around here, dude? Nobody, bro. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, bro. I'm trying to toot this guy's horn. I'm trying to toot Justin's horn, dude. Because, dude, during COVID... When you weren't allowed to see people and, you know, you, you fucking got to you know what I mean? Like, we were consistent as fuck, dude. And I think out of this whole year, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe three weeks we missed? The Deucey week and then the fucking, the two first initial weeks of COVID? What other week did we miss, bro? I can't even think of one. We knew nothing wrong. Yeah, bro, like, literally. We were hella consistent this year. I'm hella proud of us, dude. Because not only do famous people not put this much effort into their shit, there's no one local putting this much effort into their shit. You know what I mean, bro? I can get into I can get into this another time, but it's not easy doing this. Like you know, like consistently and like. So I give very big props to my brother and everybody who, you know, what I mean, and it's, it's like one of those things. So, like, I hope you guys have a really awesome new year. We'll be back. And if I'm not doing the Mandalorian season two finale, which I might, we'll be back, guys. We'll be back the the beginning of the new year. January brand new 3rd. us. Huh? January 3rd. Yeah, January 3rd. We'll be back, man. We're brand new us, bro. I, I'm dead ass serious, but I'm so pumped. Like, I'm so pumped for this year. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to, we're, we're getting there, bro. I mean, last year we went on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Now we are, dude. So, I mean, it's like one of those things. Maybe we do a Patreon next. Maybe if you guys want to support that way, I mean that that's something we should look into, dude. You know, and so yeah, I'm not trying to talk to you guys this fucking year off on it, but yeah, like I said, hit us up, guys, and have a good New Year, guys. Stay safe.